What holds our hearts from gliding, nay, from lifting up, is our own nafs. Is our own nafs. The shackle of the nafs, the gravitational pull of the nafs, of the self, holds us here does not want to let go. The nafs components are basically two. A shahwatu or shubha. Nafs components are two. A shahwatu or shubha. Shahwa are all those things that pertain to an appetite that we have as human beings pertaining to created things. Tangible created things. Such as food, or drink, or copulation, or people now use the word sex. In our culture it is, it is a word, we don't use that word because it is lack of haya, isn't it? Some of which we have lost. So there are more polite words that we use to imply uh, that relationship. And I like beta to a certain extent, in English the word copulation. It hides something. It's not too obvious. Um, playing, entertainment, wealth, and owning wealth and being attached to it, loving it and being attached to it, power, leadership, authority, are the elements of this world, the elements to which we have a very strong appetite, sometimes for some of us insatiable appetite. Those, as they describe our own inner identity, they would represent what we call in the Arabic language and the Quranic language, a hijab. You know, a hijab, that's a veil, a cover, a cloud. All those words are used that will cloud our hearts that will disengage our hearts, disconnect our clue from lifting off and flying in their flight and journey back home. The nafs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as I pointed out earlier today, superimposed the nafs on the qalb so that the concept of freedom of choice exists. We have freedom of choice because we have choices and we have choice because we have two different competing um, entities inside of us if there was no competing entity then there is no choice to make but it would be always the same thing like an angel and I wished I didn't have a choice to tell you the truth I wished I were an angel I wished I were a heart only a heart no nafs oh by the way so something very beautiful about this. Allah wants us to go back to our original state. Wants us to come back home. But also look at this. When we were born in the physical sense, when you were in the womb of your mother, when I was in the womb of my mother, doctors tell us, you learn that in embryology, what is the first thing that forms after the metosis in the womb of the mother? A heart. The first thing that there is in the womb of, your, of my mother, I was, I was a heart. The first thing. SubhanAllah, did you know that? Even if we knew it, we didn't reflect on it sometimes. You were a heart, just a heart. Beating heart, nothing else. Now take that and extend that to the realm of the spirituality. As if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, your origin is heart is spiritual heart and going back to your origin is becoming a heart again like an angel and I truly wished I didn't have a choice I wished I had I were an angel and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to come back home and live like 
angels with heart. So this heart of ours in its journey has to be freed, has to be liberated from the shackles of the nafs that holds us low with the strong gravitational pull to stay here. And Allah wants us to go free. But there was a challenge, sense of responsibility, and we as human beings brag oftentimes with about freedom of choice. We have choice, we are human beings with choice. If we thought further about it, we would regret that we had choice. But we have a choice. And in that choice, either we are exalted to the level of angel, angels, or we are debased to the level of shayateen, devils who are like all nafs and not qalb the happiness that the qalb attains and you can realize that don't you in the presence of the divine is not only unsurpassable but without comparison in other words sometimes I would like to put it this way every joy compared to this joy of the qalb in the divine presence is pain and misery relatively speaking do you see what I mean? every joy relative to the joy of the heart with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be misery it's like comparing any large number to infinity and that is equal to what? zero any large number, if it is, even if it is all the trillions, divided by infinity is equal to zero. The joy and the happiness of the qalb in the divine presence compared to any joy, to any happiness, is infinity. My dear sisters and my dear brothers, Hafizakumullah. Now, in order for the qalb to attain this, this, um, this happiness it has to be liberated freed from the nafs and here comes the concept of freedom as I understand it in Islam and the concept of happiness in a moment as I understand it in Islam through the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and the practice of those who preceded us in our great spiritual and moral legacy. The higher we go in dimensions, the more we attain of degrees of freedom. Does this ring a bell? To some of you mathematicians, if there is anyone interested in mathematics or in mathematical physics, you study that. I'm going to remind you of that. The fact is, and it's a law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the logical universe and in the real universe, that the, the, the higher we go in dimensions, the more degrees of freedom we attain, topologically. You studied that, I'm sure, in math, and if you take time to remember that, you will especially in the studies of matrices and, and, so, and stuff like that. The more dimensions we include in the mathematical realm, the, the higher degrees of freedom we attain. And that, through taking this, projecting it on many of the issues of physics, we attain real physical freedom. I repeat, the more we go to higher dimensions, the more degrees of freedom we attain. Keep that in mind. That's a law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We write it in equations. Now look at this. I'm, giving, I'm going to give you an example. Yeah. A plane. If you have a plane, two-dimensional plane, the motion of a two-dimensional creature in a two-dimensional plane is two-dimensional. There is no concept of up and down there's no concept of bottom and up there is no such a dimension in a two different in a two dimensional world so a two dimensional creature like a flat 
being living on a two dimensional uh, universe has no notion at all in his or its or her mind that flat mind because it's a flat creature living in a flat universe has no notion of that whatsoever for it it doesn't exist so it moves only sideways correct in the plane only sideways that's the freedom it has of motion that's the degree of freedom we say two the degree of freedom is two in this case but assume now we go we add one more dimension just one more in which we live in space a third dimension and lo and behold if you introduce a third dimension then we can move in a sphere we have more degrees of freedom in the physical realm true or false it's a fact isn't it for a two dimensional creature there is no such a thing as this being that moves beyond our two dimensions what is a third dimension there is no notion it doesn't exist when some spiritual two you know flatlanders would say to their you know to their students and to their people you know there is another world called the three dimensional world and it's real you know it's real and there is no freedom there you can move freer there say you are mad show it to us you see I can't these are only words our laboratories do not allow for that it's impossible by the way in order to go to a third dimension you need all the energy of the flat universe together and all the resources financial resources of the two dimensional universe and all the dollars of all the countries of the world put together to create a machine that will produce an energy to make a dent or a gate into a third dimension and it won't be enough well, literally that's what scientists say nowadays about a higher dimension from third to fourth for example I, I can't prove it to you but the mathematics and then some come some flat scientists they say the mathematics show that that it exists well that's even better but we don't have to believe it but it's a world in which there is greater freedom there is greater freedom now keep that in mind we talk about as human beings in this global culture now because of a certain philosophy of life and a certain ontology and a certain epistemology as a consequence of that and a certain methodology of research we talk about freedom of the self don't we freedom of the nafs don't we because it gives us higher degrees of freedom from the constraints that keep us to the khalq to other beings human beings I want to be free from you and from her and from everybody else I want my nafs to be free from you you are an external dimension this is a deeper dimension in me that needs to be satisfied and if I go to the realm of my nafs which is a hidden dimension which is a higher dimension I get more freedom does it make sense? I'm actually arguing uh, philosophically um, within a dialectic to help those who speak of freedom of self they didn't think about it this way but it helps them but it's not the end I tell them I agree with you there is a higher freedom when I go to the nafs than the khalq with some constraints and certain norms that we all have to respect and there is no such thing as absolute freedom anyways of the nafs because I will not do certain things of freedom away from people because it will lead to more harm to them than uh, the freedom that I want to attain and the acts I want to commit within that realm of freedom but because in that philosophy the identity of a human being is no more than physical and nafs there is no such a thing as a dimension of the qalb in that philosophy in that epistemology 
in Islam and many of us don't realize that also there is the qalb and the qalb is even more hidden of a dimension than the nafs and in our learning and in our knowledge it is the qalb that connects with the source of freedom itself Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala God not the nafs not the nafs and you can see that if I go and I accept philosophically first and intellectually the existence of the dimension of my qalb as superior and higher to the dimension of the nafs and I allow the laws of the qalb to take place in my life also I will be liberated even further and then I can connect to the divine being then my qalb can soar freely in dimensions never before experienced by man by human beings going to the dimension of the qalb provides for a higher degree of freedom because of the law mathematical law that says when we go to higher di- dimensions we do achieve higher degrees of freedom the freedom of my qalb true freedom is the freedom of my qalb true liberation is the liberation of my qalb from my nafs and from the khalq and from the created world and things and beings and as I go to the dimension of the qalb there are laws that govern also freedom of the qalb as they relate to the nafs in order for me to maximize freedom and consequently to maximize my happiness I will never have an idea of what it is to be happy at the level of the qalb if I have never allowed my qalb to be freed from my nafs I will only experience the happiness of the nafs from the khalq and only that that sometimes is a legitimate pursuit and happiness and sometimes it is destructive why destructive? because it prevents the least to say and to me the most dangerous is it prevents the heart from going free it prevents the heart from living that which it was intended to live its journey to God its journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala its journey of nearness to the very source of knowledge and of happiness and of peace and of good journey of my qalb the freedom of my qalb I want to be free to go home let me go home don't keep on feeding my nafs for the more I feed my nafs the heavier it becomes and the heavier it becomes the stronger it will pull me down hold my heart change my heart one of the scholars rahimahullah ta'ala faqih of the external law and faqih of the internal dimension of our qulub al-shaykh Sidi Abdul Qadir al-Jilani rahimahullah ta'ala great hanbali faqih by the way those of you who didn't know that he was a hanbali faqih he was acknowledged by the fuqaha and by the fuqaha of the heart to be sultan al-awliya the sultan the sovereign of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the right way not in some extreme way he rahimahullah ta'ala used to say among some most beautiful oracles that he gave from the depth of his heart naturally his qalb was connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said sometimes um, oftentimes he addresses those to whom he spoke and they were by the thousands and tens of thousands and he was in Baghdad Baghdad in those days the seat of human civilization in all aspects of life and he was the spiritual 
master never considered himself as such in all humility Rahimahullah ta'ala wa radiyallahu ta'ala and he said Ya Ghulam he would address everybody like Ya Ghulam and when you read that if you walk in this path you shiver it's you that he's talking to it's me Ya Ghulam or young boy young boy young boy how does it sound Ya Ghulam and he was when he said that in his 80s in addition to the fact spiritually everyone was a Ghulam for him spiritually even age wise everyone was a Ghulam and a child Ya Ghulam young boy ma li araka qa'idan wa qa'iman raki'an wa sajidan fi ta'ab wa nasab walakin qalbuka la yabrahu min makan why do I see you standing and sitting that is in worship and in devotions externally in ruku and bowing and in sujood in prostration in hard work and in pursuit of hard work yet I see that your heart has not moved from its place Yet your qalb has not moved anywhere. Anywhere. Yet, in other words, he's saying, yet your journey is a journey of your qalb. When are you going to move? What describes me as a human being in this journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for which I was created is how much distance, spiritual distance my heart has gone how much freedom did my heart have from my nafs and from the khalq again in gliding and flying in nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Shay in Holocaust